Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you never fail to surprise me. Today you recommended this video called A Jew Explains Why Allah is the One and Only God. Alright, this is a video that I never thought I'm gonna watch in my life. With no further ado, let's have a look. An Arabic, Aramaic and Hebrew speaking Yemeni Jew explains how misguided liars try and distort the name that he calls upon the creator of the heavens and the earth with Allah. Let's go. As a Yemeni Jew, um, I can tell you that the name itself is not the devil, is not a pagan idol, is not the moon god, as evangelical Christians have been propagating for decades. Yeah, this is a don't. very, very sick cult, by the way, and their their idiocy is quite redundant. I mean, I, I can't even imagine that people would actually teach themselves these things and flatter them, themselves with these things, and at the same time, claim to support Israel. Yeah, he's absolutely right. If you look at prominent Islamophobes, their claims are childish, man. Allah is Satan! When in, eventu when in actuality wow. in Israel, we say Allah, we say Yallah, we say uh, these terms, these phrases are understandable to our understanding that they are not in, 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 in any way, shape, or form uh, to what they say, to what evangelical Christians say is basically the devil. No, we, right. we understand what the name Allah means, what it signifies. Take the dictionary of the, of the, Hebrew, of the Hebrew language. I took the dictionary and I actually uh, took the name of God, which is, through etymology, is the three letters, Aleph, Lamith, Vehe. Basically, I wrote it down. I know I don't have the uh, I don't have the the whole thingamajigs on. Uh, you know, you get the I'm idea. Okay, bro. So, basically, Aleph Lamed Vehe. This in Hebrew means well without the well. See, that's the thing. Without the vowels, because the dots, the the nikud, the dots are the, the the vowels right here. These are vowels beneath the letters indicate how the how the word itself is to be pronounced. So I'm gonna block these right now for a second, but I'm gonna show you. This right here. In my in my understanding, because I'm going to say what it is, this says God. Ela is God in Hebrew. Now, with this, with these two right here, with these uh, two uh, vowels, this is the Fatah Sagol, Fatah Sagol. This would indicate that this would turn the word God, which without the, which without these vowels, it would be God, Ela. Now it would be Olo, Olo. Allah means a curse, an oath, or a covenant. Mm. Christian evangelicals love to use this. They like to say, ah, but you see, Allah, with these vowels, indicates that Allah is a curse. Therefore, the Muslims are worshipping an evil God who was a curse onto humanity. There you these go. evangelical Christians, they're <laughs> nutcases, they're nutbags. It's and true. I took it upon myself yeah. further to actually uh, see how they got this idea that Allah, the Arabic name of God, is a, a curse and more recently is the devil. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Allah is not the devil. Allah God yeah. forbid. May God even forgive me for saying such horrible things. Um, but here's the Hebrew version of the Arabic name Allah when, once it is written in Hebrew. The Arabic name Allah has four consonants because Hebrew is like Arabic. It's almost similar. Same alphabet, same thing, just different script. This is the Arabic name of God. This is how the script is. This is how what it's connected because right. Arabic is a cursive language. This is the connected form, but however, it is four letters: one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna have to baby you guys into this. Now, this is the name of God, Allah, in Arabic, but broken up, so that way each letter is given its position. This is Aleph. This is Lam. This is Lam. This is He. So Allah. Okay. Now this right here, Allah in the Arabic script. This is how it would be become rendered. rendered in uh, the Hebrew mm -hmm. rendition. That way, Allah in Hebrew would be Aleph, Lamed, Lamed, He. Okay. Now, how do we get this? Which this right here is, this basically means curse. And the only reason why this means it's curse because of these two vowels. There are seven letters in the Hebrew language that look like this, that have these three consonants. There are seven Hebrew words, 
in the Hebrew language that have these three consonants and they're both the same. How do he, how do Jewish spe, how do Hebrew speaking Jewish people or non Jewish people know how do they differentiate? How do they know when a curse means a curse and God means God? Because this right here without the vowels, this literally means God. This right now I'm just or God. It says Ella, Ella. Now with the vowels, line. it means Ola, which means a curse. Look at this right here. I'm actually going to write down the proper Hebrew name of God with the correct pronunciation. This is how we know. This is how we could tell when God is God and when the letter represents, or when the word is God or when the word means curse. Okay. There we go. Notice the symbol. Notice the vowels. This becomes a, and this dot right here, the holom, it becomes alo. Alo. Olo and alo. Olo. Alo. Can I see the difference? This so, right here, though they have they have the they have the exact same letters, mm -hmm. exact same letters. Everything is rendered the same thing. However, the use of vowels in the Hebrew language allows us to distinct make distinctions between the word uh, between the understandings of what the words mean, what they imply. This may mean curse, but this at the same time may mean God. Okay, that's fine. In Arabic, God can also be written without using two L's. So it could actually be Alif, Lam, Vahe. So, Ilah, which is the exact same thing as Alo. The exact same thing, he says, huh? Their understanding of how they approach God is exquisitely the same. We do not share the system of belief with Christians that they and us worship the same God. No, we do not. So help me God. But uh, Christian evangelicals do not worship the God of Israel. They do not worship the Islamic, uh, the Islamic perspective of God. Uh, Maimonides, one of our... Yeah, but here he said something that I disagree with. The God of Israel. I do not believe in the God of Israel at all. I believe in the God of the world, the creator of everything. I don't believe that he is limited to a location. Greatest philosophers in Judaism, as, as well as a religious philosopher of Judaism, has quoted extensively in his beautiful Iger, Iger Teman, or the Epistle to Yemen, in which he was uh, basically teaching and giving, uh, basically answering many questions brought forward to him. The Jews of Yemen asked, they asked, what is your position of Muslims? Are they considered idol worshippers? Are they considered paganists? And Maimonides said, the Muslims, the idolatry has been removed from their hearts. A Muslim does not know idolatry, he does not know paganism, he has no form of what, whatsoever, of any grain left in his heart. Therefore, it is permitted unto a Jew, when he enters a land where he cannot find a synagogue, that he is for, that he is allowed to pray in a Muslim mosque. He's okay. It's fine. It's okay. Hey, I can go to a Muslim mosque and pray if I have to. If I can't find a, a shul. However, Maimonides says, be careful. If a Jew enters a land where there is no mosque or a synagogue, then he is forbidden to enter a Christian church if there is one. Do not pray in a Christian church. And the reason why is because Christians do not worship the same God we do. They worship Papeke, they, they are idolaters. They are called Avodah Zarah in Hebrew, which means idol worshippers. So exquisitely said, so wonderfully stated, oh my goodness. And you know, it's, it's quite interesting that, um, unfortunately, there should be more Jews actually stating the, the facts as it is. That, you know, Muslims and J J J Jews and Muslims, we both worship the same God. Uh, no matter what, what these crazy evangelical Christians are saying, they're basically nutbags. Whatever they say, it's, it's, they just try to come up with exceeding, ex, exceeding lies, redundant lies. These, the type of lies that only a child in the kindergarten could easily make up. I agree with that. Emphasize that Arabs, Arab Christians, and you know, this is what's also funny, and I thankfully I remember this, because this is what I really wanted to say. Get, get a lot of this Christian evangelics. Evangelics. I should refer to you guys as evangelics. There are actually 20 million Arab Christians in the Middle East today, as well as the United States, as well as around and they all say the Allah. world. And Arab Christians and their religious services and their Sunday services and mass or whatever God frickin' services they have, 
Arab Christians refer in the Arabic Bible, the Arabic translation of the Bible, they say Allah in reference to God. Bilal. Now I would like to have asked these evangelicals, what say ye of these people who claim to believe in your Jesus? What say ye to them? Now are you going to go chase them and say, oh you're worshipping the set, you're worshipping the devil. The devil is Allah. Just let you know that classical Arabic is very close to classical Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, as well as cl uh, classical Aramaic. Yep. They all tend to agree. They all agree in unison that Allah, Hashem, Allah are through etymology, which is the study of the root of words, have come to a unanimous agreement that Allah is the perfect Arabic name of God, that it cannot be made into a male, through its perfection, it cannot be made into a, a, a male gender nor a female gender. Rather, it is a neutral Amazing. personification, not personification, but rather a neutral attribute to God. Such wonderful history. <laughs> All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Nothing new to me personally, it is just common sense. Nevertheless, it was good to hear it from a Jew that was speaking Arabic, Aramaic, and Jewish, apparently. And he, of course, understands that Allah means God. It is very, very simple. And yes, I agree as well here that it is absolutely childish when you see how those Christian apologists debate against Allah. It's ridiculous. As I said already, all you need to see is how orthodox Christians, original Christians, say God in Arabic. <laughs> And of course, the same applies to the Arabic Bible. If you look into the Bible, you will find the word Allah. So the attack on Islam coming from certain Christian apologists is absolutely ridiculous if you want to base it upon that Allah means Satan, means curse. It is ridiculous, of course. Stick to your guns. If you believe that the Trinity is the correct concept, all right, then discuss those theological differences if you must. Show why the Trinity is correct. Show why Tawheed is wrong. Show why it is right to venerate icons. Show why it is correct to pray to to Jesus, etc. Show why the religion of Christianity is correct instead of attacking Islam cheaply. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.